Hi guys. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is my brother Matthew. Wait, hey, stop it. <laughs> redo, redo, redo. Hi. Hi everyone. I hope you had a good uh, Thanksgiving break. Um, and I'll be talking about our new unit, which is on cellular reproduction. So if you remember from chapter one, reproduction was one of the key features of something that's living, like a living organism. There are two types of reproduction that we will be discussing. Uh, the first one is asexual reproduction. Um, this is when the parent cell um, genetically replicates its, its chromosomes and its DNA and then divides into two daughter cells, which are exactly the same as the parent cell. So the two daughter cells are identical genetically and in all ways to the parent cell. The other form of reproduction is sexual reproduction. And this is when a parent cell divides in half to two daughter cells and it, each of the daughter cells ends up with half of the genetic material as a parent cell and is not the same. Um, and we'll discuss later how those daughter cells, when they recombine with other um, daughter cells, they can actually lead to a lot of genetic diversity. Um, so reproduction is responsible for a lot of different things. Um, it's not just, we know sexual reproduction is uh, really important, but there's also the need for growth and maintenance of cells. So for cells to, for organs to grow, for your body to grow, for you to get taller, all of those things, your cells need to reproduce and to divide. Um, maintenance means that like a lot of times um, cells break down and they die. And so certain types of cells can reproduce and divide and in doing so they can replace the old dead cells. Prokaryotes, prokaryotes divide by something called binary fission, and that process is a form of asexual reproduction. Um, the first step is when the original parent uh, prokaryotic cell duplicates its chromosomes, um, and the chromosomes start to separate to the opposite sides. So if you look at this picture, this right here is the first step, where it doubles its DNA material and they start to move to the other ends of the cell. Um, the cell continues to get very long, it elongates to about double its size, and once it gets to about double its size, um, the cell can actually pinch in in the middle and divide into two daughter cells that are exactly the same as a parent cell. Eukaryotic uh, cell cycle is a little bit more complicated. Um, just to review some of the terms, chromosomes are the DNA chain, um, it's a long chain of DNA that consists of many genes. Um, and don't forget that there's also proteins inside of that DNA that just help the DNA to kind of coil up and to unravel. Um, normally, when the DNA is not dividing, it's called chromatin. And chromatin is the word that we use to describe all of the, the entirety of the DNA that's inside of your nucleus. So it includes all the chromosomes. Oops. Um, and uh, so when your cell is about to divide, before it divides, the chromatin, chromatin starts to condense down to chromosomes. It's kind of like um, when you're about to move, you start to pack everything into nice little suitcases. It just makes it easier for the cell to like keep a, keep a tally on all of its DNA material before it divides. So um, each chromosome duplicates before cell division. In the same way with binary fission for the pro prokaryotes, you saw that the DNA was duplicated first before the cell divides. Same thing with eukaryotic cells. Um, the chromosome duplicates and then what happens is it looks like a little X and each chromosome um, has its little pair of sister chromatids. Those are the two copies of chromosomes. And these two copies of chromosomes called sister chromatids are connected uh, together by something called the centromere. So when do cells divide and um, uh, how do they divide? That's what we will we, we'll be talking about. Um, the frequency of cell division really depends on the type of cell and where it is in its uh, cell maturity. Um, some cells don't divide at all. So like mature heart muscle cells, um, your nerve tissues, a lot of them don't divide when they're, at mature, when they're at their full maturity. So that means that if you damage them, you can't really replace them. But other cells like your skin cells rep reproduce all the time to kind of replace the things that have been lost. So the cell cycle is the word that we use to describe um, the entire process of the cell life from when it's first formed until it, it's about to divide, well, until it finally divides into two daughter cells. Um, there are two major parts of the cell cycle. The first part is the growing stage. Um, this is the longest part of the cell life and it's ultimately, uh, it's called interphase and it's when the cell just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, it duplicates all of its organelles and it duplicates its DNA during this time. 
Um, the second part is called the mitotic phase, which is when the cell ultimately just divides. This right here is a diagram to show you um, those two phases. You can see here how interphase is really long. It's the majority of the cell life and it encompasses three smaller parts, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And then the mitotic phase, which is when the cell, the DNA divides and then the cell divides. Um, that's very short. So as we said, interphase, that's when the cell is growing. Um, this is when metabolic activity of the cell is really high, which just means that that's when the cell um, does all of its normal functions and it, it ends up doing it, you know, to its, yeah, it ends up, you know, uh, producing proteins and uh, doing everything that it's supposed to be doing. Um, mitotic phase is just when the cell is dividing. So in interphase, um, the cell duplicates its chromosomes, and that's probably the most important thing you need to know. Um, there are three major phases. G1, called first gap, is just when the cell continues growing. The second part is S phase, and that stands for synthesis. This is when the DNA is actually uh, replicated. So it's duplicated in S phase. And then after that, then the cell continues to grow even bigger. So G1, S, and then G2. Um, all three of these phases, the cell is growing, but with S, the major thing is that its DNA is getting replicated. Afterwards, it go, the cell can go into the M phase, which is my mitotic phase. Mitotic phase includes two parts. Uh, mitosis is just the division of the nucleus and the chromosomes. So it's a division of pretty much the DNA and the genetic material. And then cytokinesis is the actual division of the cytoplasm and the entire cell. Um, you are responsible for knowing the different phases of cell division. Uh, it is a lot to kind of know, so I would recommend making flashcards for this so that you can remember all the little details. Uh, as a recap, in interphase, uh, by the end of interphase, at the end of G2, you should be have you should the cell has double the amount of DNA that it actually needs, and the DNA right now is in the chromatin fa uh, form. It's not in actually condensed chromosome fa form. Um, in the beginning of cell division, in the beginning of mitosis, the very first phase is prophase. Um, this is when you start to see the chromatin starting to condense and get packaged into chromosomes. And it's, it's kind of just easier for the cell to manage uh, and divide its DNA material when everything is like nicely coiled. Um, the nucleolus, remember that's the dense part in the middle of this nucleus, that uh, starts to disappear in this phase. Um, and you start to see something called mitotic spindles being formed. So mitotic spindles, uh, which are made of microtubulin, uh, are formed from the centrosomes. Um, just be careful of the terminology because a lot of the words sound similar. Uh, centro centromeres are the center of those sister chromatids, right? But the centrosomes are what form this mitotic spindle, which will ultimately help pull apart the, the double DNA. So this is prophase. Um, in prometaphase, this is the phase kind of in between, you see the nuclear envelope around the nucleus completely dissolves. Um, you see that the centrosome, uh, centrosomes start to move to the, they're kind of at the opposite ends of the cell now, and they're starting to, their mitotic spindle are starting to get attached to the centromeres inside of, between the two sister chromatids. Okay, the next phase is metaphase. This one's probably the easiest to recognize because all of the chromosomes are aligned right in the middle of the cell, and now they're getting all attached. The centromeres inside between the two sister chromatids are getting attached to the mitotic spindle, um, and the cell is getting um, ready to divide. No, not yet. Um, in the next phase, called anaphase, uh, the mitotic spindle actually starts to pull apart the sister chromatids and they start moving to the opposite ends of the cell. And this is kind of the equivalent of like the cell elongating and starting to pull apart, dividing the DNA material. In telophase, um, remember my, the mitosis is just for the division of the nucleus and the cell um, and the DNA material. So in telophase, the last part of that, um, you start to see... Uh, the nuclear envelope starts to reform around the two, um, now it's two separated amounts of DNA, and then the chromosome starts to decondense back to chromatin. And then you also see the reformation of the nucleolus for both of the two daughter cells. Um, so that's the end of mitosis, which is the division of cell material, the genetic material and the nucleus. At the same time, uh, cytokinesis starts to overlap, and cytokinesis is when you actually divide the cytoplasm 
in the entire cell into two separate cells. So that kind of happens at the same time as telophase, and you can see that by the end of cytokinesis and telophase, you have two separated cells. So that's the end of this lecture series. Um, I hope you enjoy, and if you want to, yeah, <laughs> thanks so much. Victoria does have a secret. How about we make silly faces here, ready? Maybe you should know that my mama don't like you and she likes everyone. And I don't like you.